All right, so uh, modeling four finishes, page 609, 609. Now, you can apply floor finishes in a variety of ways. Most methods are based on the thickness of the finished material. For example, a thin finish such as carpet might be applied with a split face and paint tools. A split face and paint tools. Divide the face of an element, such as a wall, into regions for the application of different materials. The split face tool only splits the selected face of the element. It does not result in multiple segments or change the structure of the element. Paint applies a material to the face of an element. For quantity reporting and scheduling, materials that are applied with the paint tool are distinguishable from those that are used as the body material of host object elements. To remove paint from an element, Use the remove paint tool. Now that's an important aspect of it. Not just in the aesthetic appearance of the wall, but in the reporting of the amount of surface material you painted on it, which is uh, indispensable. I'll just add that. So, um, I'm gonna read it again. You can apply floor finishes in a variety of ways. Most, most methods are based on the thickness of the finish material. For example, a thin finish such as carpet might be applied with a split face and paint tools, whereas a thicker finish such as a mortar set stone might be a separate floor type. Now, using a split face for thin finishes, one of the easiest ways to divide a floor surface for thin finishes is to use the split face and paint tools. This, met this method will require a floor to be modeled and an appropriate material to be defined with at least a surface pattern. You can schedule finishes applied with the paint tool only through material takeoff schedules. You can schedule finishes applied with the paint tool only through material takeoff schedules. Material takeoff creates a list of the subcomponents or materials of any family category. Material takeoff schedules have all the functionality and characteristics of other scheduled views, but allow you to get material quantities that make up a component assembly. Let's explore this method with a quick exercise. Open the file C4 Design Floor RVT from the book's companion uh, web page. We'll continue to file from the previous exercise and activate the level one floor plan. Okay, well, we have uh, level two and we have level one. Let's look at elevation and see. We're at negative two feet. Okay, so we're at level one. And this is the floor plan over here to the left. You will see an area of the floor that's bounded by a wall and two reference planes. Well, there's the wall, and here's two reference planes. One, two. And it's not bounded by anything in the front. There's no wall. Click the Modify tab in the ribbon, select the Split Face tool. From the upper right hand corner of the geometry panel. And pick the floor in level one floor plan. Draw a rectangle in front of the three interior walls as shown in figure 14.7. Three interior walls. Well, there's the three interior walls. Draw a rectangle. You can constrain or lock the sketch lines to the interior walls, reference planes, and floor edge. You may do so in this exercise but use constraints sparingly in, large project, in larger projects to avoid slower model performance and updating calculation time. So we could lock, lock, and lock these, or constrain them, for lack of a better term. Also notice that you generated a complete rectangular sketch instead of only three bounding lines. You do not need to draw the boundary line at the edge of the floor. However, if you do not include that line, and the floor shape is modified in the future, the split face may be deleted because it is no longer a closed loop sketch. All right, so that's uh, important, um, especially if it relies on this edge. 
Okay, so uh, click the finish edit mode icon in the mode panel. In the material browser, type carpet in the filter search. I'm sorry, return to the modified tab in the ribbon. Select the, um, the paint tool. Let me see what I want to pull down. In the geometry panel, just below the split face tool in the material browser, type carpet in the filter search uh, at the top. Carpet. Now we have, uh, we have a few. Okay, so this will minimize your choices, allowing you to select carpet tile from the filtered list. Carpet tile from the filtered list. Wait, did I get it? I don't know if I got it, but I think I got it. This will minimize your choices, allowing you to select carpet tile from the filter list. In the level one floor plan, click near the edge of the split face you created early to assign the material. Click near the edge. Did I get it? I don't even know. Um, let's take a look. Let's, let's select it and see if there's material assigned to it. Design floor sandwich, level one. Uh, I don't see anything that's going to lead me to think that there is. So I'm going to see if, if I realistically render this. Will it make a difference? I don't see anything. Oh, wait, well, there's the split section. Did I, did I, did I get the floor? Did I get the, just the split? Split face. Material. Carpet tile. Oh, I didn't. I'm, I'm silly. You got to select it. And then you have to go up top, you have to leave the dialog box. You have to keep it highlighted and you go to it and you select it. I forgot that, that's right. All right, it doesn't really tell you that. This will minimize your choices, blah, 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 and load one floor plan. Click near the edge of the split face you created earlier to assign the material. It's not like you're loaded into the, uh, the material, uh, material paint tool, close the dialog box, and then select. You do it within the context of opening the dialog box. Now, uh, complete complete application of carpet tile material to a split face of a floor. Click the done button in the material browser to exit the paint command. And we've done that already. There it is applied. You can see it now. Um, rendered. You can see it a little better. Um, to a certain extent. Okay, so um, if we other under. All right, so that's a pretty brief explanation of the uh, split face. Um, now the whole, obviously the whole floor was one floor. We could you put any variety of textures we want on it. And it'll, tie, it'll, it'll schedule. So if we want to do a really quick material schedule, see if we can get it to uh, give us what we want, do a quick material takeoff. Um, and if I could do uh, floors, let's see what it gives us. Let's see what parameters, what fields we could pull. Uh, material, let's see if we can do, uh, what do we got here? Material area material as paint and let's just leave those two and we got uh, material as paint which is separated from the uh, the rest so um, again we'll get into schedules a little further on down the route but on um, down the road but you can see there's a difference and there's four if you look at that if you think about it there are now actually four locations that it had to differentiate the, okay, the, the square footage on this side, this side, and this side. So there's now four zones, if you will. All right, so I'm leaving at that just because uh, I, I tend to be long on the tooth and I don't want to sit here and have a, uh, go off on a diatribe about um, faces, split faces. Because you know me, I'll uh, remember that in businesses and the, and when it comes to free, there's always a snake in the grass. So I have to sometimes bring you back down to reality of uh, life and say that in the business world, when we're talking about floor faces and we're talking about curtain walls and facades and reveals and hidden reveals and soldier courses, you have to remember, what about two-faced? Two-faced is a huge part of architecture. Right? In business uh, in general, two-faced.